Meanwhile, we've been ignoring some pretty fascinating things out here, right under our noses. When we've analysed bush foods, we've often found that they're richer in vitamins, trace elements and proteins than the food we're eating at home. For example, the billigate plum, which is found up here during the winter months, is the richest known source of vitamin C in the world. But you do have to be careful, because many Australian plants contain toxins. They can even be deadly. That's why I'm doing this work. In the future, army maps of these areas will include photographs and information about local bush tucker. So anyone who's caught in this country should have a better chance of survival. And all of us will know a bit more about what's out here. Send one of these into the laboratory and get a nutritional analysis done of him. It's really very amazing when you walk around the scrub country, the bush like this, just what a range of bush tucker you can find. In about an hour, I'll pick this lot up here. And within this area here, we've got a whole variety. We've got these little figs here that you can eat, as well as these cocky apples. They're called cocky apples because the cockatoos love eating them. We've also got these little hibiscus flowers which you can peel the petals off and eat. Send that off too, but don't eat it. As well as that, we've got a thing here that's really related to a, to a mango. It's called Buchanani orobavata. And these little fruit are popping out now because the wet season's about to break. And they're about to turn brown and then black. And they're superb. They're absolutely sweet and nourishing. And this fella here, this is a little vine that scrambles and climbs all over the countryside with these little tendrils here and you cut off the terminal bud and boil him up just like a spinach. So there is food here and you can survive, but you've got to know what you're doing. What I've seen so far on this trip is just a fraction of the bush tucker that's available across northern Australia. As the seasons change, they bring with them a whole new variety of foods. And it's the same with each new bit of country. I'm about as far north as I can get, and it's time to head west, right across the middle of Arnhem Land. Most Australians will never get to this part of the world, let alone have to worry about surviving out here. But I still think it's important for all of us to have an understanding of it. The early explorers looked at this land with European eyes. They looked for things that they were familiar with, things that weren't here. This country doesn't release its secrets very easily and we're just starting to scratch the surface. And one of the great things about it is that it keeps on throwing up surprises at you. This is really very hard to cop. This is a place called Emu Springs and it's right in the centre of Arnhem Land and from here on I'm on my way out. 
it's a superb little oasis, quite contrasting to the rest of the countryside. Right here, it's safe from crocodiles, but downstream a bit, the crocodiles do live down there. In the middle of the day, I can't find a better spot to spend half an hour. You can even get yourself a bit of bush tuck around here as well. This is the thing called the Leichhardt fruit and it comes off this Leichhardt tree. Inside you've got this little pulp when he fills out and gets ripe, which has got a slightly bitter taste. But it's not bad, it's good tucker. They used to call this tree once upon a time Noclei orientalis, but they reckon that was too much of a mouthful. So they changed the botanical name and they now call it Sarcophilus coordinatus, and that's a great leap forward that is. This will be ripe in about a month's time. And I reckon if you came back then, you'd get a tremendous feed off this tree. It's named after Leichhardt, who passed all the way through this whole area. And these trees dot the northern part of Australia all the way around the streamlines. They're great stuff. Well, this is it. This is the other border of Arnhem Land. And I've driven all the way through from one side right the way through to the other. Looking at those storm clouds over there, I might have just done it in time because that's the beginning of the wet season. And if you get caught in Arnhem Land in the wet, you're there for keeps. I reckon maybe another half day's drive and I'll be on the bitumen. Might be able to get myself a hot shower at the same time. And that's something the poor old Leichhardt wouldn't have been able to do. But some things about this country and this land just don't change. And the wilderness and the beauty and the attraction of the whole place remain exactly the same. And I reckon that's terrific. <laughs>